Check this out. Here are some Flask web application codes. These codes are vulnerable. Most specifically, they are vulnerable to XSS, or cross-site scripting. It takes a parameter name and displays it on the screen without any input sanitization, which makes it vulnerable to XSS. Let me show this in action. So here is this web application running in my browser. If I put any name in here, it'll be displayed on the screen. But instead of a name, if we put a JavaScript snippet inside, it will also get executed because our input isn't being sanitized. Now this is the web application without any firewall. Let me show the one running with the firewall. It is the same site running the same code in the back end, but let's see what happens when I try to execute the same XSS payload in this web application. You see, the web application firewall detected that it is an XSS attack and completely blocked our access. And that's how a firewall works. Before we deep dive into web application firewalls, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. So what exactly is a WAF? WAF stands for Web Application Firewall. It's like a security guard that sits between your users and your web application. Every time someone tries to access your site, the WAF checks the request to see if it's safe. If the request is normal, it lets it through and your site works as usual. But if it spots something suspicious, like an XSS payload or an SQL injection attempt, it stops it right there before it even reaches your application. The cool part is, a WAF doesn't need to change your actual code, it just filters out bad traffic. So even if you have a vulnerability in your application, the WAF can still block attacks in real time. Not only XSS and SQL injections, but web application firewalls also protect you from other types of web attacks, like DDoS attacks. It will block the IP address that is flooding the website with unusual traffic. There are many web application firewall providers, but in this particular video, I was using one from Safeline. You can check out Safeline through the link provided in the description, but let me show you how easy it is to configure a firewall with Safeline. On their website, you can see this one-liner, which you can run directly on your system to install the Safeline firewall in your Linux system. It takes no time if you have a good internet connection. Once installed successfully, you're provided with a username and password. You can use it to log in to their panel. You'll be prompted to buy their premium plan, but you get a seven-day trial. Once you configure everything, you can quickly head over to the application section and configure a firewall for your web app. We can add a new application by clicking the Add Application button. In here, you need to set up a few things. First is the domain. If you're using this firewall on an actual web app on the internet, put your domain in here. If not, you can just put localhost. Next, we've to select the port. Now, because we're on localhost, we can just choose port 80 and skip port 443. If you look a bit down, you'll see the upstream box. Here, you need to put the IP address along with the port of your own web app. In my case, it is this one. Once you fill in these details, you can just press submit, and this application will be added to the SafeLine firewall. Now, let's navigate to the URL and see if it is actually working or not. How web app is live, let me quickly try some basic XSS and SQLI payloads to see if the firewall is working. As you can see, as soon as I try to use any kind of XSS payload, the firewall quickly detects it and forbids access to us. It's the same for SQLI payloads as well. If we have a look again at our panel, you can see we can set different modes for each type of attack. Different types of web application attacks are mentioned here, like SQL injection, XSS, SSRF, and code injection. You can set up severity levels for them and can even disable them. Also, we get an auth feature with our firewall, so only authorized users will be able to access the web app. If we have a look at the HTTP flooding feature, we can choose IP-based rate limiting to protect unauthenticated endpoints, limit the number of requests from specific IP addresses, and handle abuse from repeat offenders. You also get three different modes, a defense mode in which all the attacks will be blocked, an audited mode which will only record attacks without blocking them, and a third, offline mode which will block all users. We also get an attacks tab where we can see which attacks were conducted on our web app. We can add an attacker's IP to the block list and completely blacklist it from accessing the web app. Check out the SafeLine website through the link provided in the description and try to install it for your own web applications. 
You can also join their Discord server if you get any kind of problem while setting things up. That's all for this video. If you found it useful, press that like button and don't forget to subscribe.